TV Crazy Man here. Today we go into action and adventure mode, looking for fun goofs and hilarious bloopers from your favorite action and adventure movies and TV shows with superheroes, detectives, and all kinds of heroes that dare to risk goofs and flub lines to save the day. That'd be a cut. Nobody was more serious about busting criminals than the 70s detective Cannon, played by the legendary William Conrad. You could lose your license for this. That's a little dangerously, huh? When Conrad says stay put, he means stay put. Keep in mind that Cannon was a very serious show with no laugh track. This laughter comes in from uh, Dick Clark's blooper show. Conrad was known for his amazing voice. He even voiced Lone Ranger in the 80s cartoon. So surely a guy like him could never make a mistake. Keep going. <laughs> well, it does. Well, it does when you consider that each one of them had a specific talent to contribute to a major... All right. All right. All right. Then we should have a phony run with your moaning cub. Then we should have a phony run with your motor car. Then we should have a phony run with your money car. Okay, that's pretty funny. If I stay, I go up for life. What's the attraction? I'll tell you what the attraction is. Uh, what is the attraction? Well, it works. Does the father resign or does the quid just kit? Quid just kit. <laughs> Let's not lose our tempers. Yes, gentlemen, we mustn't get rattled. Let me throw this in real quick. In no way am I saying any of these shows or movies are bad. Humans make mistakes, and even I admit to goofing up finding goose. In the 90s, there was no other hero bigger than Hercules, played by Kevin Sorbo, but even he made some mistakes. Oh no, there goes the set. Now Kevin, here's where you show Hercules is not superhuman. First of all, you're bleeding. And next you have to flip Eolus over your shoulder. He's so... Oops. Stop it before you hurt yourself. Is he ever gonna come in? I'm sorry. I said, no more fighting. You see the rhythm? I, I, I talk and then I fight. It's, it's very complicated. What's wrong with you people? We're ahead of my line. We're ahead of my line. <laughs> Here come all the stage hands. I'm not going to stop. <laughs> Let's go farther back in time and look at some movie serials and see what kind of goofs or bloopers we could find back then. Captain Marvel was the most popular superhero of the 1940s, outselling even Superman. So if this doesn't hurt Captain Marvel, and this is no big deal for Captain Marvel, then how is Captain Marvel getting knocked down by nothing more than a chair? Why doesn't that guy answer? Shazam! Tell me the secret, and Miss Wallace goes free. Well? There is one thing that definitely bugged me, is that Billy Batson was always getting gagged so he couldn't say Shazam, even when other people were captured and they weren't gagged. It, it just didn't make any sense. Tell me the secret, and Miss Wallace goes free. Well? Well, good luck getting an answer out of him. And this goof happened really quickly. It'd be very easy to miss. It looks like Cat Marvel has actually lost his balance, which a super powerful superhero like that probably wouldn't do in real life. Well, if superheroes were real. For more on the Captain Marvel movie serial, check out my latest video I did uh, recently with facts, goose, and all kinds of information on the actors and so forth. Now let's take a quick look at some Superman movie serial goofs. In chapter 11, Jimmy Olsen hides from crooks in a wooden box 
on a truck. And at the end of the chapter, two crooks come out and fill the box full of lead. In chapter 12, it's actually Superman that's in the box. But now it's only one crook firing into the box instead of two. In chapter 9, Lois Lane and company are casting shadows on a photo backdrop that's supposed to be real buildings. Also in chapter 9, it appears that Clark is using his x-ray vision to see through a man's disguise in a photo. Obviously, if this is what they are going for, that would be impossible, as photos only capture what's on the surface, not what's underneath. Although, in all fairness, maybe this was meant as some sort of super deductive ability, rather than the use of x-ray vision. If you'd like to hear more on this topic, check out my Superman movie serial video I've done recently. Now let's see what kind of bloopers Leslie Nielsen committed in the short-lived but legendary show Police Squad, which only lasted six episodes in the 80s, but led to three very successful Naked Gun movies. All right, Jill. I know you... I... <laughs> Do you think you can beat the champ? I can take him blindfolded. What if he's not blindfolded? I can still beat him. I believe you, kid. <laughs> I believe you, kid. What's my next line? <laughs> Once again. I believe you, kid. That's why I won you in the poker game. You fight in the up and up. You'll be able to look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> All right, once again. Corduroy and the fair lady gives way to the putrid stink of self-interest. You know what I mean here? Thinking only of number one. The Incredible Hulk, starring Bill Bixby. When it crashed through the door, your left arm goes... It's half healed. I know. It's one of the characteristics of a metamorphosis. Of my metamorphoses. I've seen other metamorphoses. <laughs> so I turned into a banana once. <laughs> now Bill Bixby was such a great actor. But in this next scene, he's supposed to be really serious. But he flubs up one word, one word, and it messes up everything. Stop it. Jack is a good man. He's also an egg beater. <laughs> that makes him very dangerous. Okay, in the episode Life and Death, in this scene we see the Hulk jumping down an elevator shaft. According to my research, this is a stuntman instead of Lou Ferrigno, but that's not the reason I think this could be considered a goof or a blooper. It's just the way he's jumping down the elevator shaft. It's almost like he's disco dancing to Boogie Woogie or something. In the second TV movie, the Incredible Hulk faces a bear. Unfortunately, he loses half of his skin, or his skin color, onto the bear. I bet you didn't know that the Incredible Hulk sometimes wears green tights in order to keep his feet warm. I it figured on that. But the result that we just couldn't hang on long enough. I think we got two one tenths. I'm not sure, but they were probably. Oh. <laughs> Not so good, son. Not so good. Don't lose your head now. Remember what you've been taught. Who the hell is walking across that sky? That's the last time, Harry. Put your arms at your sides, and I'm going to blow. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> this happens to be the end of your little kidnapping operation. Kidnapping? <laughs> now return to the Incredible Hulk, starring Bill Bixby. It's metamorphoses of uh, a change that, that happens inside my body. I had an overdose of, of radiology. It was actually radium treatment. It was, I was in, a, in chapter one of this. <laughs> Very good. Let them pass.
Now, this is a, a stunt where the actor should have taken a fall, but he forgot. <laughs> and that you give us a chance to save Kurt Oscar. This happens to be a security matter, Miss Summers. Now, don't cause another problem. Problem? Cock-a-doodle. Cock-a-doodle. This is an episode, The Night Demon, has a sort of a Scooby-Doo vibe going on. As Jamie discovers an empty monster costume she later wears herself to scare the same crooks that were using it before in earlier scenes. Keep in mind, Jamie herself wears this costume later, so we know it's empty right now, or it's supposed to be. But if you look carefully, you can see the creature's eyes are actually moving. Now that's spooky. Somebody's playing games. <laughs> You know, I've been practicing those those exercises that that, that you gave me, and and, I, and, I, and it made me feel a lot more rela relaxed and kind of in, in touch with myself. Ah, uh, uh, they, they, it's nice. <laughs> that was no accident, and neither is this. It's all part of his plan to make some kind of a rendezvous. <laughs> no, what? Does this look like a woman out of shape to you? Hmm? Put it down. The Greatest American Hero ran from 1981 to 1983. It starred William Catt and Robert Culp. In case you missed the show the first time around, Ralph Hinckley is a school teacher who is given a costume from aliens that give him superpowers. He teams up with Bill Maxwell, an FBI agent. Think of it kind of like I Spy meets Superman if Superman didn't know how to use his powers very well. Or at all in some cases. In the Season 2 episode, Hog Wild, a motorcycle gang has taken over a small town and smashed up a local gas station. You can see junk is everywhere before Ralph flies by, but once he does fly by, it's almost like the gang decided to clean up their mess. And typically, motorcycle gangs don't rampage and destroy and then clean up their mess before they leave. In the Season 2 episode, Plague, when Ralph catches up to Bill after he's been thrown from a helicopter, you can see that Ralph's cape is actually a parachute. You can even see a mini chute that activates the main chute attached to Ralph's right leg. Don't get me wrong, I think this was a very unique way to simulate flying for a superhero, and definitely risky compared to using CGI or wires. But it's still interesting to see a superhero who flies wearing a parachute. There's a couple times on this episode that Ralph doesn't look quite like Ralph. Who's this guy? Okay, unless I'm really losing my mind, that's not Ralph Hinckley. I mean, I'm the TV crazy man, but that's because I'm crazy about television. In the Season 3 episode, Live at 11, as Ralph takes off, you can see a trampoline springboard pop up from behind the bushes. I see you're Ralph uh, Hunkley. Hinckley, actually. I'm sorry to see you retiring. It's very kind of you, Mr. Hinkle. It's no wonder people had trouble with Ralph's name, because after the assassination attempt of the 80s greatest icon, Ronald Reagan, by a John Hinckley, the show actually changed the character's name to Ralph Hanley for the remainder of the first season after that had been occurred. Mr. Handel, Rhonda's teacher. Mr. Hanley. Oh. You know, amazingly, I didn't notice this as a kid. Of course, they tried to sort of brush over the fact, for instance, by having his students refer to him as just Mr. H. And then they went back to Hinckley after the start of the second season. The incident, of course, put the show's creators in a really bad spot. On one hand, it seems like you should be able to trust your audience to know your character is fictional and has no ties to the Hinckley in the news. But on the other hand, it was a situation of historic proportions and there hadn't been any other TV show in history in a similar boat. So I'm sure it was a puzzler on how to handle it. I think I would have just skipped mentioning his last name until the next season entirely. But then again, what about the millions of Americans who have the last name Hinckley? What were they supposed to do? Change their last name? <laughs> On the Wonder Woman episode Screaming Javelins, which guest stars Rick Springfield and Henry Gibson as the villain, Gibson is seen skydiving at the very beginning of the episode. 
What was it General MacArthur said? Did you notice anything off? I have returned. Have you noticed anything different now? My old friend, Diana Prince. We see what they did is they mixed in footage of someone really skydiving and the studio shot of Gibson. But they forgot to give him a mask like the skydiver was wearing in the real footage. Looks like Gibson is taking his mask off and on to give his diabolical monologue. What was it General MacArthur said? Now on the original Wonder Woman Goose video that I've done, I posted this already, but I forgot one really important thing to mention, and that's that Gibson wasn't wearing a parachute. I was worrying about the mask and forgot all about the fact that he didn't have a parachute on. Now that's a goof. Now I bet you're wondering what in the world could have been wrong with this transformation scene from the same episode. Well, every now and again, when Diana Prince does her transformation into Wonder Woman, things in the background appear, and then they disappear. In this case, it was the trash can. Kind of makes you wonder if her transformation somehow destroys things that are in the vicinity. I don't really think of this as a goof, it's just something interesting that I read. When Wonder Woman leaps up through a window several stories up, there's a mattress there for it to land on. I mention it's not because it's what I call a mistake, it's not really noticeable, but it's interesting to see how they did things back then. You know, in case you want to leap up several stories in the air through a window, you really should consider having a mattress on the floor to soften your landing. Once in the building, Wonder Woman throws two bad guys down the hall. Well, one is a bad woman. But still, the point is, they both go flying and land out of our view. But just for a second, you can see the mattress they land on stick out in into view. You know, being a stuntman would have been fun back then. Except for the jumping off tall buildings, I wouldn't have liked that. But that, that would have been a little too much for me. But the play fighting and landing on mattresses and stuff, that would have been, that would have been a lot of fun. Now check this out, if you keep your eye on the shadow when the guy is thrown across the hall and lands, you can see the shadow of the mattress give in as he's landing on it. It's pretty cool. I'll arrange for full cooperation from British intelligence. Goodbye. <laughs> Next, in the episode Knockout, Diana Prince changes clothes before she turns into Wonder Woman, without actually changing clothes. Notice when Linda Carter's stunt double jumps out of the car, she's wearing a purple dress. But when they show Diana Prince transforming into Wonder Woman, she's wearing blue jeans. I guess they hoped we wouldn't notice. Up yours. Hmm, <laughs> well that wasn't very nice. In this scene, Captain Marvel's chasing some teenagers that have stolen a car. Okay, just in case you missed it, let's try one more time to see what kind of mean tricks they played on us as kids. Okay, now keep your eye on the driver. Did you see him dunk down? So remember, we've got four crooked teenagers coming out of that car. Four people ought to be coming out. Well, there's two. There's the third one. <laughs> that fourth one just came out of nowhere. You see his arm? Kind of makes you question reality itself, doesn't it? Now, Cat Marvel is going to get a good look at that car because he knows there's something weird going on here. You know, you have to wonder if there is not some real-life magic going on in this show. Let's see if you can spot this goof. Or is it a goof? Well, it's great. Did you catch that? Billy Batson's sitting there playing his guitar, and then all of a sudden the guitar just changes into another guitar, right in front of our faces. And this happened on the episode Doom Buggy. You dig? 
This next one's pretty easy to spot. I think even on a black and white television getting reception from an antenna without HD or anything else way back in the 70s, I think you'd probably be able to see this. I mean, the rest of it looks pretty good up until you get to this point. It looks like Captain Marvel's either turned into one of those Mego action figures I used to play with, or maybe he's turned into one of the balloon people from the first season of the Super Friends. I'm not sure, but I think Captain Marvel's passed out from all that heavy lifting. Holy moly! Right here. Should have known it was you guys. I'll get some of the guys fast, Mr. Gaines. They don't want to come. This next scene could have been meant for a new Twilight Zone revival because either the Dukes drove so fast they went back in time and passed themselves or they went into a parallel dimension or maybe the crew just left an extra General Lee lying around. I don't know. $5,000 a day for horses and wranglers and this is what we get. Hey, check out my TV Crazy Man YouTube main page for all kinds of interesting classic TV stuff. Please subscribe, hit the bell for future no notifications, like, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks and have a great day.